la bataille. A back. Yeah. It's been a while. I don't know. I think it's probably been well over a year. So we're bringing back the uh, Did You Know That here on the ZBrush Live channel. So uh, for those that are just tuning in for my wild and wacky and craziness for the first time, welcome to Thunderdome. So you're going to get used to that. Wonderful 80s themes, references. Love it. Need more of it. So we are taking a look in this segment is things specifically inside of ZBrush, how we can use some features to create specific workflows, and having that as our topic um, in the sessions. So we are going to be today looking at uh, the Snapshot 3D because I just think it's super powerful and there's a lot of really cool things you can do with it. I'm just not seeing it used a ton yet, uh, which is understandable. We're all learning things, right? We're all getting at it. So I want to focus on that and really take a look at that and show you guys the things that you can do with this because uh, it will open up a lot of avenues for you. Uh, of course, I find it extremely useful for hard surface. Um, so, but you are definitely can be using it in an organic mindset as well. So I'm going to take a look at just two particular models. So that's kind of why I started with the art station here. So uh, you've got a glider here, right? So we're going to just take a look at this piece that I made um, using pretty much the Snapshot 3D. And then this is an NPR render out of ZBrush. Hey, Thomas, how's it going, my man? Uh, so, of course, yeah, 100%. Look, the question's coming through already. I like this already. Uh, there's a question about having the ZBrush sculpt being sent to CNC machines and getting the card out of wood. 100%. Yes, doable. They're doing it now. In fact, let's even go to it here. If, for all of you that don't, no, we have our own event called the ZBrush uh, Summit. So you'll want to go to the URL summit.pixelogic.com. And one of our sponsors, so here we've got a sponsors page here. So we've got a lot of other companies going to be here. We're giving away, I haven't tallied up the final number yet, but it's between forty dollars to $50,000 worth of product we're giving away. So these are all of our sponsors that are going to be part of the ZBrush Summit. Um, so Monster City is actually going to be here in person. James is going to be here. And that's one of the things they actually do. They have CNC machines for cutting out of wood. He's going to have stuff on display. And they use ZBrush a ton. And they also have a bunch of clients that contract them out. So to answer your question about CNC, machine, and wood, 100% doable. Yes, can be done. In fact, I have my own little tiny CNC machine myself and I know our main man Mr. Joseph and Drust Joseph we Drust has one as well so but going back to the summit uh, that's the end of this month so this is actually perfect timing so it's in about two weeks two and a half weeks so we've got a great lineup of presenters so you want to come to this web page presentations are going to be Friday through Sunday so that's Friday September 27th through Sunday the 29th We've got a whole bunch of things. This is biological, visual stuff. Um, that's the first presenters. We've got Ubisoft. We've got a break. So important. So, so important. Hasbro is going to be here. Um, Z Long from China is going to be here. He's an amazing artist. Uh, we, Pixelogic, will be making a presentation as well. So you want to go through here and take a look. And if you can come in person, I'd highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun being here in person. Um, like the Griffiths Observatory is going to be showing some stuff, which is pretty cool. MPC, by the way, MPC's presentations only available here in person. So we stream this entire event for free. It'll be on the channel ZBrush Live. It'll be going to our Facebook, our YouTube, um, and our Twitch. However, the MPC one cannot be streamed. They're going to be showing Lion King stuff, and unfortunately, that can only be shown to the people physically here. So another incentive for you to come by. Chaos Masons, amazing stuff. I'm telling you, you're going to love them. Uh, they've presented the very first year, and now they've just got a ton of stuff. What's going on, Winston? Thanks for tuning in. Um, our man, Raphael Grissetti. I'm sure you all know about him. Uh, we have an artist from Japan showing collectibles for anime kind of stuff, Sakaki. 
Um, and then we have our award ceremony. We have our art gallery opening slash party. It's happening Saturday evening here. And then you got your Sunday presenters. You got Maria Pampalova. You got Tippett Studios. You got Carvel. This is another person going back to that question. Cameron, which Carvel Creative does, is all large, monumental, huge things. So obviously they're using a lot of CNC machining. They're using 3D printing. They're doing a lot of different stuff to make happen. And ZBrush is one of the key applications that they're using. Um, you got Gilberto, also got some amazing pieces. And then you have Elastic that is commercials. But So they're going to specifically be showing like Games of Thrones, um, the Westworld main titles. They did all that. Also on top of that, we have workshops. So currently there's only two workshops available. So there is Cameron's workshop. We're doing large monumental stuff again, but also talking about CNC machining, 3D printing, workflow. So this would be a great shop. It's only 200 bucks. This is the only thing we charge for our workshops. Everything else is free, but this has still got some seats available. And last I looked, yep, the beginner introduction class of ZBrush has got two, two seats left as well. So those are the only two workshops left. The other ones are all sold out. So if you're going to be here in person, those might be another great thing for you. We also have um, portfolio reviews. So we are constantly still adding. So these are going to be companies, individual artists can sit and look at your work if you want to come down and put your work in front of them. They can give you some tips, some tricks, or there's, like I said, there's companies here. Um, and then we also have an on-site challenge. So last year we did a Michelangelo challenge where the artists, people here were physically sculpting. They got 15 minutes. It was a lot of fun. And the winner's actually taking home like a $4,300 printer. They're taking home an Ultimaker 3 extended printer. So this year's theme is going to be emojis. So you got to create an emoji in 15 minutes inside of ZBrush. So that's happening here on site. So, okay. So that's the summit just as we got into that. So I want to go again and say, we're going to take, be taking a look at how we can do things like this in particular, right? Or a walkie talkie here that we have here. Okay. Something like this. So in fact, that's the model that's up here right now. Okay. So <clears throat> when I throw on our live booleans, you can see then the walkie, walkie talkie, niner, niner, vector, niner, right? So this is what we have. I'm going to come out of perspective mode. And you can see, I know it's a walkie. I know it's super exciting. Okay. And then here's the uh, ship. So that we have, okay. And there were a lot of different techniques that I used to make this happen here. Okay. And so I colorized it here. We can turn off the color so you can also see it without the color. All right. And it's just seeing the workflow is what I want to cover. Okay. So if I turn off live booleans, you can see what it actually is. So I want to go through this and take a look at this feature and really start to use it and have some fun with this. Okay. So by all means too, you got questions coming through, fire them away at us. Okay. Um, I'm also going to put a poll in here from time to time in our chat. So for our next topic, so if you want to click on that link, these are ideas for our next topic. So in this, you guys control what I'm going to be talking about for each one of my streams. So since it's been so long, I just picked one of the newer features that I'm getting a lot of questions about. So I thought I'd cover that. But if you click on that link for the straw poll, you can start clicking on what it is that you would like. Okay. So let's just load something very simple. Okay. I just want to, let's just first start grasping our idea and getting around this. Oh, I'm just reading uh, the question. Sorry. Okay, so I'm going to just load this cube here. Okay, nothing nothing crazy here, just loading up a cube. All right, and then I'm going to come over here. And for me personally, obviously now in 2019, um, we have the ability now to stretch out our subtool menus. Okay, so I like to hover around like 12. Right. And then, of course, now there's going to be folders in here that we're going to use today as well. So I've got a cube. I know. Woo. Yay. Cube. Right. So we want to take a look at now using the Spotlight Snapshot 3D to create pieces and be able to start doing things. So 
I'm just going to go ahead and open up my light box. I'm using the hotkey, the comma, 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 Told you, 80s. Okay, I can't sing too much or YouTube will just say no. So um, I want to open up the light box, which is, again, clicking this button. Or the hotkey is comma key. And I know that because when I scroll over that light box button, it says show hide light box. And you see there's a little comma. So, for example, if I went over perspective, you can see it says perspective distortion. And then the P, that's the shortcut is P, right? And if I go to floor, you can see shift P. Okay, so that's all I'm doing. And then I'm going to go to this little spotlight option here, which is in essence a folder that's on the computer. So this is in essence an internal browser. Okay, so that's what Lightbox is. It's an internal browser for us to see things. So I'm going to load this one right here. I'm going to load this very first one, which is 512 hard surface, and then you've got images floating here. Okay, so what I have here now is Spotlight turned on. Right, so where I can find Spotlight is in the texture menu. Okay, you can see right here there is an on-off, and now you can see the shortcut for that is the shift Z. So if I'm tapping shift Z on my keyboard, you can see I'm just turning it on and off. Okay. So now that I have this ability to have these images, that's great. Okay. So what Spotlight's going to allow us to do, and Spotlight's been around since version four, which is about 10 years ago, I want to say, maybe 10 years ago. Um, it allows us to use images to paint or images to sculpt. Okay. So what we added in the most recent version is now we're using images to actually create 3D meshes. And in this case, we're using specifically just black and white. So pure black and pure white images. So if you have an image that's got pure black in it, that'll be transparent in Spotlight. And anything that's pure 100% white, you'll visually see it like we're looking at this right now. So this is just a Spotlight file with several images in it, okay? And then I'm gonna hit the Z key, which is bringing me in a different mode. So this is edit spotlight mode, okay? So there you have that, right, okay? So there's a question coming through, just some guy, I like it. That's a great username, um, just some guy, all right. I like that, that's awesome actually. Does ZBrush have a way to do exact specs? For instance, example, if I'm creating a piece of furniture with legs that are exactly 2.188 inches by 3.5 inches by 16 inches. Yes, there is ways to get this and get the scaling. Anytime I'm doing toy work, okay, um, I like to be able to know the size or like maybe if I'm going to have to readjust something in like a couple millimeters or Heaven for Betsy, your your director, your art director comes, hey, we need to make this like 5% larger, man. Okay, there's, you got to figure out that math, but you'll have that. You're going to have different changes. So since that's got brought up, for me, my biggest helper for scale and getting through that and helping me out and understanding everything is Scale Master. So this is a plugin that ships with ZBrush. So you have it. Okay. So... This right now is going to allow us to set our scene world in millimeters, centimeters, inches, and feet, right? Because like many other applications, they don't know what world you want to be in. So you tell the application what world you want to be in. So I can do this with this plugin. So as an example, you know, we got this cube right now, right? If I just hit set scene scale, you're going to get all the measurements that pop up. So this cube is two by two by two, right? That's just numbers, two by two by two. It doesn't, ZBrush does not know, do you want, is that two by two millimeters, inches, feet, centimeters? What is that exactly? So you, the user, are going to tell the application. So you can see I got two by two by two by two by two by two, right? In inches, feet, centimeters, and millimeters. And if for those that have just tuned in watching me for the first time, I'm back, baby. And I like to talk fast. So if I'm talking too fast, I will slow it down to, and then I can rewind. No, but seriously, if I'm talking too fast, pipe up in the chat and I'll make sure to uh, answer your questions and slow down. So you can see there's only one millimeter number because actually ZBrush's default world is millimeters. Okay. 
So what we're doing is, okay, this has got to measure a 2 by 2 by 2 millimeter. But if is that really actually 0 0.2, 0 0.2 centimeters, or is it point? See, we're doing the math for you. So that's why there's multiple numbers in the other ones. So I'm going to say, you know what, this is 2 by 2 inches. So what I've done now is I've just set this particular scene, this world, in inches. Okay, And you can see the sliders update to 2 by 2, and then it switches to inches. Okay, so what this also does for us is if you hit the W key, or W, the W key, okay, all right, it pulls up our gizmo. So all I'm doing is switching to the move mode right now, right? And I'm going to hit the Y key. Why, you ask? <laughs> Real bad joke. Is I want to switch from the gizmo mode back to the transpose mode, transpose line, right? So you can see I'm just turning this button on and off, which I use the hotkey Y. Okay, and why I'm bringing this up is this is now a measuring tool as well. So you can see there's little dashes here. <coughs> Sound effects, so important, right? So the little ones, and then there's a big one. So every big dash, that's an inch, okay? And then, of course, every little dash is now a quarter. So this, is, this would be two and a half, two and three quarters, right? And you can control this in your preferences, so there's transpose units. So by using that plugin, we also set this line to now be in inches. Okay. So you can see you have major ticks, you have minor ticks. So if I want to have more accurate, I can say 10, and now you can see I'm I can go 1.1, 2, 3.5 inches. Right. And so now the beauty of this, if I turn on this polyframe, okay, hitting shift F. Okay, I can click anywhere and start dragging out. Now, what's nice about this is this is snapping to particular parts of the mesh. It's snapping to vertex points. Okay, so as an example, right, if we walk down to the lowest level, so I'm doing that by moving this slider, and then I'm just using the shortcut, which is Shift D, as in David, and then the letter D by itself walks back up. Okay. So what I can do is I can click here and then click there and I can see that those are snapping, right? Or I can click here, click there. So no matter where I move this, you see it's eventually when it gets close to a vertex point, it snaps, okay? So this is telling me the size from this vertex point to this vertex point in inches. So for example, if I want to know what is the from here to here, okay? Up here in the top left, you can see 1.4141 inches. So that's how long that is in the world of inches. So as an example, now if we take this in the context of a character, all right, so let's just load our demo soldier, right? And now I'm looking at our demo soldier. I would say, okay, well, let's set his scene. Let's see, he's in inches, right? So he's actually, I want him to be 7.91 inches tall. Right? So that's how tall he is. That's this particular subtool that I have selected. Okay? So when I, now t if I go to another subtool, okay, which I'm just using the up and down arrow key, right? That's all I'm doing right now. I've just cycled through. So you can see I'm using the down on the keyboard, up and down arrow keys as a way to cycle through subtools. Of course, you can hold the alt key and just tap on any one that you want as well. And there you go. So you'll notice the sliders won't update. So I need to click the sliders to update subtools, and you can see now this is the new the measurements now of this vest. Okay, so what I like to do is, you know, when you're doing, you're let's face it, you're not using a cube when you're creating stuff. You're right, you're like this person's asking me, just some guy was asking me, like, he's doing furniture. He's doing furniture. It's going to be a nice piece of furniture. I'm doing creatures or a mech or I'm Gundam or whatever it might be, right? So I like to do this because when I get freelance work, they'll tell me, hey, Paul, this can't be any bigger than, let's just say, 10 inches by 4 inches by 5 inches, right? So in essence, because it's going to go in packaging and blah, 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 okay? So I like to do a new bounding box subtool, okay? And what that does is create a box that is going around. So if I turn on transparency here, and I'll turn off ghost, you can see that box, I know from tip to finger the tip to finger, right? what that width is. I know from the lowest point of the foot to the highest point of the head, what that height is. So when I click this, you can see the bounding box 
is actually, this is eight inches. From the very lowest point to the highest point is eight inches. Your Z is your depth here. This is my Z, right? So from his chest to the backpack, that's 1.9. And then the X, of course, is his wingspan, right? Get my webcam, wingspan, right? So that's 5.44 inches. So this is the plugin I like to use, okay? That does that. And no, there's no there's no plugin that gives sound effects, Winston, but I am working on it. You know, you know, if you know me, that's one of my things I'd love to put in ZBrush. Okay. So this is what I like to do. Now I have, and remember, I've got measurement ability now with this. I can measure across things, right? I can go up to any of the subtools and do measurements. Right, so if I wanted to go back to him, and again, I'm just using the up and down arrow key, and I want to say, hey, what is what is the length from this arm to that finger? And that's 2.0991 inches. That's where I'm at. So hopefully that answers, does that answer that question for measurements and how I like to use it? Okay, so hopefully that helps. Unfortunately, I can't talk about anything about development or release. Tune into the summit or be here and see me in person and Joseph Just in person, many other Pixelogic people in person, just stay out of the spit zone. You know, Joseph and I like to spit when we talk, right? So we have our own presentation that's happening Friday evening, the 27th. So it's streaming also obviously on ZBrush Live, but I would say be here, it's a lot more fun. So, cause someone was asking, sorry, someone was asking about a UV plugin that we've been working on, when's that gonna be released? And unfortunately I can't discuss anything about what we're developing. Okay, so back to it. Back to our wonderful cube. Yes, the cube. I made a cube. Wonderful. So let's look at this spotlight. Let's make something. You know what? Let's start making, let's do some kind of ship. Let's get a little different. I'm going to do instead of a cube, I'm going to do, let's do some kind of spherical ship, okay? So I'm going to load the polysphere. This is the sphere I prefer to use. I really do not like to use this Sphere 3D because it's got a pull. It's got triangles at the end, top of it. I only use that when I'm doing like an eye because then it's perfect, right? But sculpturally wise, if I'm not going to do something like dynameshing, then I will use this sphere. This is just what I prefer to use. And we're going to keep this low polygon. So I'm going to delete the hires and let's even reconstruct and get a little bit lower. That's, that's low enough. So let's make some kind of ship um, that I want to maybe mess around with and work with. So, Mark Newman, what's up? Facebook. No, you don't need 3D Print Hub to set those dimensions as well before printing. Technically, uh, so Mark's asking about the 3D printing stuff because we were just talking about Scale Master. So technically, Mark, you can even export right from this plugin right here. Okay. So you can export this, and you can say all, right? And so you export it. Unfortunately, though, the only thing you're going to have is an OBJ, which for most 3D printing now, that's good enough. You don't need STLs really anymore, okay? But, Mark, if you're going to go back and use the 3D Print Hub, this plugin is not currently looking at, right, at the measurements, so you would need to do this update size ratio before you went and exported through this plug. Because you gotta think guys, these are this is Mark, there's two different types of code, right? Scale Master's its own plugin with its own type of code. And then 3D Print Hub is its own code. But in essence, the same thing that I just showed in Scale Masters is what 3D Print Hub is doing as well. It just won't do turn the transpose line into a measurement for the 3D print hub. Okay, does that does that help that is that answer that question to you, Mark? BAM! Sound effects, right? So let's move on. Let's go. Okay, so we can go and say, let's go back into the world of a gizmo and we can squash like this. I'm going to start doing something like that and maybe something like this, right? Have some kind of shape like that. Uh, I'm going to decide to, let's do a deformer instead. Um, I'm going to make it symmetrical on the Y and let's do something like, let's move that, which is, you can see it's pretty much doing the same thing. But what I, why I want a deformer is I also want to do something like, let's do a little bit of in here and let's just mask out only that and maybe have a little bit of something like this going on, flatten that front part a little bit. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a deformer, right? 
So you can see the little white dots that I have. I'm going to slow down here because everyone, some people might be like, I don't know what you just did, dude. What's happening? Okay. So we've got these cones here. So this cone, when I scroll over, you can see it says Y symmetry. So one parallel, two mirror. So I'm just going to say I wanted this at two. And you can see as I'm moving this, some of the white dots disappear. Well, because now that I'm symmetrical, you don't need to hit these dots as controllers down here. So whatever is white is what you move, right? And so you can see as I move this one, this one's automatically moving because that's my Y axis, right? And I'm telling it to be symmetrical. So what I'm doing, what I find very useful is these white dots can be masked out. So in essence, if I hold the control key and drag out, you can see I masked out those dots and now they disappear and now just those dots are left. I personally though, when we did this, we added something. We added the ability to do this, right? And so what this is doing is unmasking, right? Keeping these unmasked and then masking out every other dot, okay? So for example, if I turn this off, right? And now I did this again, you can see all those other white dots just disappeared because technically they're masked, okay? So if we put this in the terms of here, if we grab our demo soldier guy again, let's turn off ghost. And let's just look at just him, okay? So if we're looking at him, how many times have you guys ever wanted to go, hey, I want to mask something off, right? But I want the inverse. So like I want to mask off eyes, right? So of course we could just do this, right? And then you inverse, right? As an example. So you're, you're holding control and you're tapping through to inverse your masking, right? So or you'll do something like this and then you inverse, okay? I am now... Like, I use this a lot. I will do this and then just position this where I want it. And now I'll hold the Alt key. And you can see I don't have to do an inverse. It's automatically doing the inverse for me. So what it's doing is whatever's in that box stays unmasked and everything else gets masked. Guys, I'm telling you right now, everybody, I'm telling you, this, you might not think like, whatever, that's not that big of a deal. This one for me was a big deal. And I know that because... When we were developing this, and then I would go into class and teach, and I was using the version that none of you knew about, I kept, my hands kept doing this, and I was like, oh man, I'm not in my beta right now, development, I'm in the version that everybody else knows, right? So that's when, for me, it was like, aha moment, I was like, wow, this is, I'm going to use a lot. So again, I'm just holding the Alt key, and then I'm, there you go, right? So here, if we pull out, so instead of doing this, and then control tapping to inverse, I can now just do that, and I got the same thing. So again, control key, start drawing it out, and if you look, look up here, 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 right? I'm not holding the keyboard anymore, people. That's why I'm being annoying right now. This is a very important moment, I'm telling you. And that's why I'm snapping my fingers. Anytime I snap my fingers, people, it's not because I'm trying to carry a tune here. I'm trying to tell you I'm not holding the keyboard anymore. Now I'm holding the keyboard, space bar in it, right? Now I'm not. Now Alt key, right? So the misnomer is when you guys start doing something like this, you got to keep your finger on control key. You don't. The brush is engaged now. You don't have to hold the keyboard anymore. That allows you to now to use space bar, right? And allows you to use the Alt key, okay? So you might not think this is a big one, but this is a big deal, okay? So I use this a lot, okay? So here we go. So back to my wonderful sphere here i'm going to just start saying okay i want to now squash it right and you can see it's only happening on the one side i'm going to say i want that symmetrically happening so we're going to do that and then i'm going to do this and then that'll only move that point i'm going to make symmetry x actually would be useful as well now that i think about it so we're going to squash that and then i'm going to take this one and we're going to move that and then I'm going to take that and move these out, kind of just make some kind of little different type of ship shape, okay? I'm going to turn on now my dynamic subdiv by hitting the D key, D for dy dynamite, right? Which is right here, your dynamic, so it's in your tool geometry dynamic, okay? So now I have this, I'm starting to look at it smooth. Okay, I'm going to open up creasing because I'm a big crease guy. Okay, and I'm going to switch to Z Modeler. And I'm going to say, you know what, let's crease some of these edges. Okay, so I'm going to say this edge right here. 
holding the space bar, complete edge loop crease. I'm going to crease that and let's crease that one. Okay. So now we got something that looks like this. You know what? I'm going to delete this one in there. So now I got like that. I know it's amazing, isn't it? Beautiful. Okay. So this is really important for me, especially for those people that start doing hard surface within ZBrush and things like that. I think hard surface takes a different mindset. It's like chess or like an onion or like if you're like me, fat kid that likes to eat unhealthy food, cake. It's layering. There's layers here. There's things that are going to happen, right? You got to look at something very, that's just crazy mech stuff going on and break it down backwards, really. Okay? Where organically, you can grab a sphere and just make a head, right? Boom. Right? You don't have to reverse engineer as much. Hard surface, there's a lot of reverse engineering, or there's all looking at a design and making sure you're placing things, proportions, all that. I digress. So, one of my big things I like to do, obviously, I don't want this super crisp lines. That does not exist in real life. Okay? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell ZBrush first, in the dynamic subdiv, I'm going to tell it to smooth my surface more. All I'm doing is telling it to divide more. So, now I'm dividing more time. Right? More times. Okay? So, in essence, I'm dividing four subdivision levels. We're just giving you a preview. So, I can turn it off and on. Off and on. Right? And then what I want to do is I want to tell ZBrush, you know, this crisp sharpness that I've made here, don't hold that forever. Okay? So, I'm going to go to this crisp level slider, or crisp level, <laughs> crease level, and I'm going to drop it down. Okay? And you can see at four, nothing happens. Okay, and nothing's happening because my subdiv level is sitting at four. The minute I go to three, you can see that updates now, right? And you can see that's a lot softer. That is more realistic, right? And so I would say I would want probably mm, two. I like two. My go-to for me, is for when I'm using something like Zmodeler, low polygonal workflow in ZBrush, I use I like to start with my smooth subdiv at four and my crease level at two. That's that's just me. That's what I prefer. Okay? So it's just what I like to do. Now, let's now get into what the topic today was going to be, which is our spotlight feature, right? Our make a three. So now, this is in essence my base mess of some ship I'm going to start making, right? And I want to start thinking about making some elements to this, all right? So back to spotlight, okay? So there are two modes to this, all right? We've got this mode where you see your dial, and then you've got this mode where you see the images and the dial disappears now, right? And in this mode, I can move my model around, scale, right? Zoom in, things like this, right? So I want to be able to manipulate images as well. So that's why there's two modes. There's this mode, which is in essence editing my images that are sitting within Spotlight. And then there's this mode, which is projecting the images onto your mesh, whether sculpturally or texture, whatever we want to do, right? I want to now use the images and edit them and use them to make shapes, okay? So I'm hitting the Z key, by the way, which that button's found right here. You can see there's an edit spotlight button, okay? So this is a Lisa needs brace, braces moment. Lisa needs braces moment. Hey, real thing, by the way. No, I'm not a coder. Uh, I'm more like in the, I'm the head of development in, in along with a couple other people. I help come up with the features. I help implement the features. I help when we're coding them, I'm working with them, figuring them out, see if they work. I go in and out of the studios and also help them implement ZBrush, show them what they could do with the, um, application itself. All right. So here we go. Edit. You can see that the Z key as in ZBrush, right? There it is. So let's just grab an image. So to grab an image, I click on it, boom, I've got an image, okay? So what we've now done the capability, and you're gonna see this throughout this stream today, is now I have the ability to snap to parts of my image, right? So I can snap to middle portion here, we'll move this over here, right? Snapping to the middle parts and the ends. You might not think this is important, people, but we're, I'm gonna show you today why this is gonna be really important, okay? Not only that, is if we now look at this straight on, okay, and I've turned off perspective because I want to be looking in orthographic views a lot. So and I don't want a perspective camera to be 
taking away or uh, making it so I can't line things up. Okay, so I have perspective off, and now that I have this, okay, if I click anywhere inside here, I can move the image, right? If I click anywhere inside of this circle, I'm moving the dial, right? And you can see I can move this dial to snap to any of the images. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, but what it also can do is snap to the mesh. So you can see now we have the ability, just like in the images, to snap right to the middle, right? And I can snap to the middle lower, midpoints, and the corners, right? This is becoming now very useful. Okay, so with that said, I can take this image, move it, and now the image is snapping. That would be a better sound effect for the snapping, I think. Okay? It's like suction cost. So now I have, and I know this image is sitting directly center of this mesh that I'm creating and that I'm making this ship. Okay? I can scale this. Right? I can rotate this. Okay, as simple options. I can undo those actions to the point where I can even undo the movement that I did. Okay, where I can undo and put it, this image all the way back to all the way back over here if I want to. Divyang, you're confused. Tell me what you're confused about. I'm going to keep talking. I'll come back and see what you're confused about. I want to make sure no one's confused here. Okay, so again, anywhere in this open area of the dial. So inside the dial, except for inside this circle, that moves the image. See, it's moving the image. Even though the dial's nowhere near the image, I'm clicking right in here, right? So here, I'll, I'm clicking in this area, so from the dial in, okay? That moves my image. If I click inside this circle here, inside here, that moves the dial. That's different, right? Because you're going to want both actions. And if I click anywhere on the outside, you can see it moves all the images as a unit which is beneficial because maybe I want to put all these up here in the corner and I just want to be messing with this image. Okay, so I don't know if that was what you're confused about, but hopefully that helps. Okay, so let's take this and say, all right, I'm going to use this H. I'm going to scale it up, okay? And I'm going to say I want to use this maybe here on the top or maybe along the side or something like that. So I'm going to snap it to where I want it to go and then I'm going to click this little camera. Right, and this is the snapshot 3D. When I click that, boom, nothing happens. Of course something happened, right? So if I turn off spotlight, you see I now have the H, right, as a piece of this topology, right? And now this is now part of my ship, okay? So now you can see I've got this piece and what it's done is created a new subtool. So we started with this subtool, and now we have that, right? And you can see my polyframe. We'll turn that on. It's also polygrouped. So the front's got its own polygroup. We'll make it a different polygroup visually so you can see better. So you got a polygroup here, you got a polygroup through here, and you got a polygroup in the back. Now, the other thing I want you to pay attention to, let's look from the top here. Let's turn on this transparency again. You can see the front to the back of this is the width, okay, of the first subtool. So in essence, what we've done here is the subtool you have selected is being used as how big of a piece of geometry deep is it going to be? I got it this way. I got to You ever when you ever done this on a webcam? You do this way, and it's like the opposite because right? you got to. Oh, uh, the camera's actually this way. <laughs> I just had a stupid moment for Paul. Hi, welcome to Paul's brain working. Kind of. Okay. So, so throw your, throw your questions on other topics. Go ahead. We'll get to them for sure. I want to answer whatever I can. So, again, to grasp your uh, head around this, everybody. Okay? I'm going to keep my subtool palette open now. All right? Let's turn this back on. Let's grab a different shape now. Let, let's, just, let's grab the ZBrush logo. I don't know. Okay? And I got this sitting here. It doesn't matter where it is in space. That's not relevant. Okay? It will be relevant here in a little bit for what we're going to do. Now, if I just click on this snapshot, boom. See, it automatically creates a new subtool directly below the selected subtool. Right? And so if we look again at this, you can see we got S Superman looking Z-Man logo now. Right? And now I have that width. 
you're trust me, you're going to see why this why this becomes important. Okay, it's going to become pretty pretty important to us. All right, so I'm going to delete this and say, okay, let's just have this. I kind of like what's happening here. I'm going to use this image, kind of this thing, as thrusters. Okay, I'm kind of I kind of like where this is sitting space. I like what's going on here. So we're going to end up using this. Okay. Just answer just some guy's last question. You can't snap subtool to subtool. Hold on, there's someone saying just ask. Yeah, if you want to work a, an OBJ in a work in measurement, you could just import the OBJ and then set that as your scene, right? But if you're adding an OBJ to an already existing scene, then that scene's going to have the measurements set. It's just like if I was another external application, if I go in the application and say I'm in centimeters world and now I just import something, it's importing into that centimeters world, right? So an OBJ itself, if you guys just import any OBJ, right, it's going to have measurements, right? It's going to have size there. And now you just have to tell what size is that. Okay, and then you would go to the scale master again, and then you would do the same thing we talked about in the beginning of this. You'd set the scene, it would give you the numbers. You got to know, I, there's no way for the application to know, hey, did you mean this in centimeters, inches, feet, so forth and so on, right? And then you just click it, and there you go. So to Jim and some other guy, does that answer the OBJ question? There's nothing different. It's just you're importing an OBJ now that already has a worldly scale that you want. And now you just have to tell ZBrush what world you're in. So I can use that, that part to do that. Okay. So moving on. Okay. So here we go. I want to be able now to continue designing an element and doing more with this. So let's continue looking at what we can really do with this spotlight. So now we know we hit this camera. Bam. We can have things, meshes created automatically. Okay. So what I want to do is take this to another level. All right, let's take uh, this. Looks this is a cool piece. Let's take this. All right, I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to say let's put that right about there. Okay, and what I want to do now is I want to tell this piece. Okay, not only to be another subtool. Okay, but as we created this, we have that right. And what I'm going to do now is turn on this live Boolean up here. And you can see now that's actually cutting into the surface. Hold on, I gotta, I'm going to sneeze one second, I think. Right, so now this is actually cutting into the surface. And what I've done is I've set this subtool to be a subtractive. So you can see these icons right here, these are an S... These are Boolean options. So this is union, okay? This is subtractive, and then this is intersect. So I want that set as a subtract. And now I have that cutting into my surface. But what I did to make this workflow faster for me, I did something very specific, okay? And I'm going to turn on my floor, and you can see you've got a red line right there. That's my X. So I want this on the other side as well. Okay, so in my geometry, okay, we'll close this now. And in modified topology, I can do a mirror and weld. And now you can see it's got it on the other side. So really, I have two of these. Okay, so if I now switch to a gizmo, okay, again, I'm hitting the W key. I can change the size of this up, right, which in essence is changing how this is cutting into the surface. So maybe I want this because there's going to be some lights that I'm going to put right there. You know what? I want to go a little bit deeper with something a little bit more like that. And that's what I'm looking for. Okay. So now the benefit here is I have this, right? And this is now a particular size, right? And I, by default, automatically set this as a cut. So watch this. Let's now come back into Spotlight. All right, let's grab something else. Let's grab this circular piece. Okay? And I'm going to put this right here. 
let's size that down. Okay, and we're going to say right there. So I currently have this subtool selected, which is that little notch that we're using where I'm going to put some lights. Okay, I'm going to say, you know what? I want to add it to the existing subtool. All right, so now what I have here, okay, if you look, I want to have the ability to say, okay, this notch right in here, I want to add parts to this. Okay, so I want to make sure. Whoops, sorry, I, I hit the shortcut for expose. <laughs> okay, that looks like nothing happened. But what really happened is I'm creating other pieces of geometry. So you can see there's circular pieces there, right? So there's one here, right? So you guys can see that, right? And then I created another one here, right? So there's this one as well. Right, so you have this, right? You can see there's different pieces being created, right? And then notice it didn't create a new subtool; it added, okay, to another sub, adds to the same subtool. So in essence, what I'm doing here is this one button, this one snapshot thing. You can either create a mesh that's a new subtool and it's automatically just a union. You can create a new subtool that's a subtractive. And you can add to existing. So now what I've done here is you can see all these are the same length, right? And this is going to become very handy for certain things. You're going to, you're going to see here in a second. So what I want to do is say, okay, let's take this thought process, right? I'm going to delete these other circular pieces. We don't need those anymore. And let's do something now at the top of the ship here, okay? So I'm going to select this piece because the height that I want here is what I'm looking at. So let's turn this on and I'm going to say, oh yeah, I want a circular piece. Okay. I want this in the middle. Boom. It's in the middle, right? So that's the mesh center. I'm going to do say something maybe like this. Okay. And then you got a world center as well. Okay. I'm going to like where that is. I'm going to hold the alt key now and I'm going to click on the little camera. That uh, what tells the application is create a new subtool, but make it subtractive. So if I turn off spotlight, you can see that is going through. So here, if we turn off this piece, you can see it's going all the way through now. This is why that knowing the, the width or the length and how you're looking at a piece with this feature is very important. So this width for this particular piece was dependent upon the subtool that I had selected. So this was my selected subtool. So the highest part here and the lowest part here, that's the width that is created for this cylinder. So what it does for me is perfectly creates a cut into the surface, right? And that's because I'm creating a new subtool that's automatically set as a subtract. Right, and then because I have live booleans on, it's being used as an axle subtract. So if I turn live booleans off and on, you can see the difference. Again, off and now on, right? Because these pieces are set as a subtract, right? And then this piece is set as a subtract, okay? So let's turn this back on because really what I want to use this cylinder for is something like, uh, let's do a little flat surface like this with a little ridge, maybe something like that. Okay. I'm liking the looks of that. Perfecto. You know what I also want to do? Let's add a little bevel. So the beauty of this here, we're going to look at just this solo. So this has got polygroups and it's got creasing. So in the crease menu, you guys can just start beveling, right? This, right? So you get that. We beautiful. That's not what I want to do. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna hold the control key and click on this and we're gonna make a little bevel, right? And by holding the control key, it's using the poly groups as where to put the bevels. So with this Spotlight 3D and this little hidden Easter egg feature, they work really well together. They It creates very cool work for me, right? So if I turn solo mode back off, you can see this is creating now a nice little bevel in there. So if we move this up a little bit, you can see there's a bevel that's happening there now. And maybe that's what I want. I want a little bit of that kind of bevel happening through there. 
Okay, but before we do that, let's undo, okay? And let's look at this piece. So now we've got this piece, right? It's making a little cut into our surface, all right? We're going to have the height, a certain height. So what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to move this down and adjust my height because I only need about that much height-wise, okay? So I'm going to say, yep, just about right there. That's good. Okay, so why this is important to me is I'm going to look from the top again, okay? And then I'm going to turn on the spotlight again. And this time, instead of using the circle, okay, and our selected mesh is that circle we just made, right? So we'll get rid of the, we'll just size these down. Let's take the this little square, or, right? And then I'm going to size this up, okay? And because I can snap, I'm snapping to the mesh center, right? So I can snap up here. I can snap down here, right? And what I want to do, hey, Pro4210, hi, Mortar Caner, okay? So what I want to do is I want to snap this to the center, okay? And I want to scale this, okay? Great, I can scale, which is just being able to scale <clears throat> the whole thing, right? It's just proportionately. Okay, scaling. I don't want to scale that way. I want to scale this way, right? So now I'm scaling more of an asymmetry, right? So what I'm doing is I'm holding the control key, and then I'm just clicking on the image, and I can scale this direction. Okay, great. And then I can hold the control key now, scale this direction, right? And now watch this. I'm going to hold the shift key and click on the camera, right? That's what I want to do. I want to hold the shift key and click on this camera. What that's going to do is create another mesh, but it's going to be put within the same subtool. And see, now I have that going across, right? So if, again, if we look at only this, this is actually what we have, right? And I, I hit the button twice, so let me get rid of one of them. Uh, let me, because we don't want, I don't need two of them. We don't need two of those. All right, so the first one was this little, right, this little s s circle, and now I took this cube and I actually stretched it. Hey, Ruby, what's up? So now I have these two pieces in the same subtool. And again, I'm doing that by when I go in here into the spotlight in this camera, I'm holding the shift key. So let's kind of regroup here. If I just click on the camera, we automatically create a new subtool based upon the image we're looking at. If I hold the alt key, we automatically create a new subtool, okay, and set it to subtract it, okay? If I hold the shift key, we're just going to add to whatever the selected subtool. It doesn't matter if it's a subtractive intersect or unit, it's just adding to whatever it is. And everybody, when you guys are hovering over these, Look up here in this top portion up here. We're actually giving you the shortcuts right there. Right? So we're telling you what things can do right here. So I can just hover over that, and the shortcuts are given to me, again, at the top of the UI. There's a question coming through by Black Pixel. Hi, everyone. Quick question. What's the keyboard shortcut for resizing brushes? And it's Alt, drag, left, or right. So resizing the brush key. So there's many ways to do that. Okay, I prefer the S key to resize my brush, okay, which is obviously this slider right here. You can also hold the space bar, and then you'll get the draw size here. Or like Photoshop, you can use the brackets, just like in Photoshop. You can use the brackets themselves, which that is actually found right here, your brush size. You, know, you can even set your own shortcut if you want to to change your draw size. Okay, so there's multiple ways. So there you go. All right, moving on here, okay? Let's put a little let's put a little bevel in here. So let's do that little trick. Put a little bevel on that. Yeah, that's good. Let's now move it up because I added that bevel ability. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Something like that cuz I'm going to put like some kind of cockpit or something in there. All right, so let's now keep taking this idea, all right? And let's look at something in particular, okay? So let's load another tool here. Let's load my walkie-talkie, right? 
so you can see this little walkie-talkie. I know it's not anything super impressive. It's just a walkie-talkie. But there's some things in here that was a lot of fun using this feature. For example, the numbers I want to show how I did and how I did this transitional stuff through here, like this part and more importantly, this part. Okay, so if we look at how I built this, I started again with just a simple base mesh. Okay, so I'm going to clone this, right? And then this is what I started with. It's just a cube, and then I use project primitive to put in a little bump in there, right? So I have a nice transition. Okay, then I said, you know what? This needs to have a little bit of design element or has a little bit of another piece there that's out there where a person's going to be gripping it. I want to have a little more volume with the hands, especially me with big hands. Big hands and all. Right? So I said, you know what? Let's make another piece of geometry. So, right? That's what this piece is. So if we turn this on, right? There's this piece of geometry. There's this piece of geometry. Okay? So let's go ahead. Let's go to this clone version. And let's append this so you guys can just get an understanding of what I'm talking about here. Right? So... This is what I mean by looking at hard surface a different way. This is more looking at it in, it's a, again, onion, a chess piece, right? I now have two pieces of geometry that are making this, right, piece. And I know Booleans is going to weld this all together for me because these are both set as a union. So I'm not worried about that, okay? So what I want to do is, okay, I want to have some kind of nice transitional element in here. All right, so let's look from the top like this. Let's turn our spotlight back on, okay? And let's grab this piece, okay? So I'm gonna move this again to the center. I'm gonna snap it. So I want world or mesh. I'm gonna go with mesh center. I'm gonna size this up, something like, let's say something like that. Okay, and the little camera is what creates the subtool, the new mesh on the left side. Okay, so real thing, if you found a bug, create a ticket, for, do me a favor, create a ticket on support.pixelogic.com so we can take a look at what you ran, what you encountered. Okay, and we'll be happy to help out and figure it out and see. Okay, so instead of just clicking on the camera, which is just going to create a new subtool that's a union, holding the alt key creates a new subtool that's subtract, okay? Holding the shift key just adds it to the existing subtool. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold alt and shift at the same time and then click that. And you'll be like, well, what does that do? Well, you can see it automatically create a new piece of geometry. So it does that, right? If I turn it off, it looks like nothing's really happened, okay? Watch this, if I start moving my gizmo though, look at that right? It starts cutting into the surface. Okay, now watch this. I'm going to move this subtool down to be the, the lowest one. So I'm just clicking on it and then I'm just clicking dragging, right? Now it's below these two subtools. Okay, so now when I move this, look at that. Yes, right? This is what I mean about building upon building something else, right? So I'm using this mesh is pretty much the main part of my walkie-talkie. This mesh is the handle part a little bit to give me some more of those handles. And now this I'm using as intersect, right? Or if you have Apple product, it's your Apple router, right? So this is now transitioning the two. And what's happening is this subtool is sitting below the two above it. So it affects any subtool above. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder now. I'm going to hit Control F, and I'm going to just say walkie, right? And then now I'm going to say I want that subtool and that subtool. So now these are all placed within a folder for me, right? So this is a really now great way for me to start working. So let's go back to this ship now that I'm starting to work on. Okay, now, now let's start taking some more of these ideas now and laying some foundational things and some elements here. All right. <clears throat> so when we created this subtool, that's great. I can take an image and an image and put it on itself, right? The problem we have with this 
is you're creating a lot of overlapping geometry here. So you got a lot of coplanar surfaces. Okay, so what we wanted to do, instead of doing that, what if we allowed you to do that actually in this mode here? Okay, so what I mean by that, all right, is I'm going to click on this piece as an example, all right? And I'm going to say, okay, that, that's a cool piece. Let's do a little something more with it, right? Let's take this circle piece, and I'm going to, let's say, snap here. Let's snap here, and then I'm going to move it along here, and now I'm going to hold the shift key. So now that locks also this image to only be able to move horizontal. So let me do that again. I start to move the image. Once I hold the shift key, it'll snap. So see this one snapping to the green line, right? And so if I start moving this way and then hold the shift key, it's now snapping to that red line, right? So it's, you got to start moving and then hold the shift key. Don't hold the shift key first. That moves all of them. Click on the image, start just selecting it, and then hold the shift key, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to snap to the top here. I'm going to hold it and hold the shift key. Let's size this down. And now what I want to do is I want to use this, okay, as a cut. So that's where this icon now comes in. So this is called union. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the alt key and I'm going to click. And you can see we use the circular image to cut out of the stretch rectangle. Okay, so let me rewind. <laughs> Okay, so again, I've got this shape, snapping ability. Advantage us now, right? Clicking on this and holding the shift key. Advantage. I know I can keep it along this line now. I want it to be about there. I'm the artist. That's where I wanted to go, my man. That's where I want it to be. Ah, okay, so now I'm going to scale it down because I just want to kind of cut in a little bit, right? And then so I say, okay, hold the Alt key, and then click on that. This icon is now using the image that's selected and cutting in to any image below it. And so now I have something like that. Okay, so again, you guys could also do stuff like tile it, right? So I could tile this if I want to, right? And I can tile in all directions if I want. Right, so I could technically size this down now and say I want this to be here. Let's size that down and say that. Hold the Alt, tap, right? And you can see it's making a circle there, but you see the tiling isn't working. So we need to solve that. We need to figure that out, okay? So I'm going to show you now techniques to start now combining some of these elements and make some really great workflows, okay? So number one problem I have is let's go back to where I was because I wanted to not do this. I wanted this. I want that hole. Okay. So I got that here, but I don't have it on the other side. Right. So now I'm going to click on this image. Right. And you can see we have a flipping ability right here and then flipping in either direction. Okay. What I want to do is not only do I want to flip. Okay. So I not only want to be able to flip left to right, I want to mirror the actual cut. Pretty cool, right? So I'm just mirroring the cut. So I'm saying, put it on the other side for me. Because right now, Spotlight doesn't have the ability uh, to do this, having having uh, symmetry in the axis. But that's why we put symmetry actually in the controllers. Okay, so what am I doing here? So let's grab something that you visually, everyone can really see. Okay, something like this. Okay, so I got this piece. All right, let's come over here. All right, let's size it up. So you got just tapping mirrors, horizontal, tapping mirrors, vertical. Or, or flipping, sorry, flipping. Okay, but this button can also be used for mirroring. Again, look at the top. We're telling you what you can do. Hold the shift key and click, and it mirrors left, left to right, right? And if I go over here and I hold, instead of the shift key, I hold the alt key, it does the opposite. It mirrors from the right side and puts it on the left side. So of course, this one holding the shift key mirrors from the top to the bottom, and then holding the alt key mirrors from bottom to top. Right, does everyone, everyone understand that? So then as a user, I can come here, click here, 
and say, okay, I'm going to mirror over there, and then I'm going to also mirror this way, right? So I can mirror multiple ways, in essence, right? And then I can say, you know what, I don't like where that one was sitting, so we're going to go backwards. Look, I can do undos for, for days now. There, I'm undoing even my cuts, right? So this is also new. You weren't able to do stuff like this before. You were not able to do that. So I'm going to grab this again. And I'm going to say, I wanted that actually a lot smaller. I wanted it to be more something like this. Okay, Alt key, tap. Okay, there it is. I'm going to select on this now. Holding the Shift key, mirror it to the other side. Shift key, mirror it to the other side. Okay, so now what we have here is we're creating a benefit for ourselves. Okay? So what I have is, if you remember, this piece, I know it's been a long time because Paul likes to talk. I'm a talk. I'm a talker, baby. Okay, I've got overlapping topology here. See that red and the green and the purples? There's a ton of topology sitting here. What I am now doing, instead of doing the original workflow that I was talking to you guys with, I am saying, you know what? Let's just create the alpha right in here, right? And so now, when I have this selected here, we'll go from here, all right, and We'll select this piece, okay? And now if I just hit only the camera, right? We're selecting a new piece, and what it's doing is creating the new piece of geometry based upon that new alpha. So I can create my own alphas here, right? So it doesn't stop there. Watch this. This is when we can start now really having some fun here, and this is we'll start getting in some new features here. So... You can see I keep reorganizing myself because I like to have, I don't like having a mess. I like to just, my eye, I have ADD, I think. So I want to be just focusing on this image, right? So all the clutter going on over there, right? But I can also just reorganize pieces here, right? I can reorganize things how I want, okay? So when we did this, right, we scaled this up. Great, super. So forget the way I showed you. That's right. Forget that control click thing. What I want to do is start maybe making images here and doing something a little different. So let's create an alpha and let's start combining some features here. So instead of holding the control key, right, you guys can use this extend, right? And you can see I'm extending one way and then I can extend another way. Right, I can extend this way, right, back and forth, or I can even extend this way, right? So the benefit to this is, watch, if we grab, say, something like this, okay, instead of that control trick I showed you guys with scale, right, I'm going to scale this up a little bit so you guys can really see what's happening here, all right? I'm going to extend this now. And boom, now I have something like this. And then I can extend this way and see now I have something like that. Right? The control key scaling is not going to allow you to do that. It's just, see, it's just scaling. This is actually extending. So where that red line is, we're cutting right there, right? And then extending from there. So you see that red line is the center point. So what that also means for you people is if I do this, right, I move this dial, say maybe here, and now extend, you can see now I get something like that, right? And you guys got to now remember, think about what I just showed you here. I can mirror it across, and now I've got an alpha like that. So I'm mirrored from the bottom to the top going on there, okay? I went from boom, boom, right? So... Now I'm going to say, okay, I'm in essence creating a whole new different alpha, all right? So I've got this alpha, okay? And now what I want to do is put something in the middle. I want some kind of circular shape in the middle, right? We know we can click on this now, boom, do this, and snap it. Boom, it's in the middle. I'm going to say something like that. I'm now just going to click on the union, and what it's done is added that now to this image. So you guys starting to see my workflow here is whatever image I grab and put over top of something else, it gets added to it, right? And now I say, you know what? I want a little circle hole in there. I can grab this one. There, it's sitting, right? I'm going to move this. Snap, snap, snap. 
Let's size this down. Then I'm going to say I want that to cut in, so I'm going to hold the Alt key, tap, right? There you go. Okay, so now I'm, I'm, I'm going wild here, right? I'm doing whatever I want to do now, right? I'm going to grab now this piece and say, you know what? I want some kind of, I'd rather have this centered here. So let's center on this piece, okay? And then let's come across and say, let's go right about there. And I'm going to click and boom, add it. Right? And then I'm going to say, okay, I want to now come over here and I want to mirror across, right, this. So I want to mirror from one side to the other side. Right? I'm creating now this image, which is now, again, now, now if I just click on this and hit this little camera, we are going to get the topology now based upon the new alpha. I'm creating my own thing, man, from scratch now. Okay? So now I have that ability to be able to just start creating my own alphas through here. Now, let's take this another level. Okay, let's keep expanding upon this. It's a cake. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, right? Or an onion, whatever way you want to go about it. Let's take this piece. Okay? And let's go ahead and now use this feature. And I can frame. So what I did is I took a piece that was solid, and now ZBrush is only giving you the framing element, right? So if I went and selected this piece that I've been making, and now I framed it, I would get a double frame like that, right? Because it takes the outer part and the inner part and frames it, right? And then I can say, no, 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 I don't want that. that that's a bad idea, Paul. Horrible, horrible, horrible idea, right? But I have this framing ability, which is really nice, okay? So this framing ability not only does this, okay, but it also does this, where I'm growing the alpha inside the image. Then it also will shrink the alpha inside the image. Okay, so why is this kind of thing what I care about? Okay, so let's look at this ship that I <laughs> kind of got off track from. Okay, so what I want to do is take this, and I want to make this kind of the afterburner. So I'm going to say, all right, let's look at the back. This is the back of my ship. Okay, we're going to say that. Let's turn this back on. And what did I use to make that? I used this right here, right? So I'm going to say, you know what? I need that H as my selected subtool, right? Because I would like to snap that there. And then I'm going to size this up and kind of be in that same size, right in there, right? So now it's sitting in the same location. So in essence, I'm using a piece of geometry, right? And then I'm using an alpha, don't line it up. All right, so watch this. Now I'm gonna say, you know what? I wanted that shrink a little bit like that, right? So I'm holding the Alt key, let me, re let me rewind. Okay. Holding the Alt key, holding down the frame, and then doing that. Okay? And now I say, you know what? I want this to be a new subtool. So I'm going to hold the Alt key and click on the camera because now I want to turn it into a piece of geometry. And so what we have here now is this H is going through the whole thing. Right? That is not what I want. 100% not what I want. Okay? So I'm going to turn on my polyframe, and here's the beauty of this. I can just size this down, right, like this. We put no edge loops in this middle polygroup, so it gives us the ability to do stuff like this, right? And what I want is this to only be digging in a certain portion, right? So maybe about that much in, right? So now this is digging in how far? Something like that, right? And now I have, say, that, okay? And now I say, okay, let's do some more here, right? So let's, let's take, okay, I don't know, let's take this little piece here, right? So I'm done with this. Let's take this one. Let's rotate this. So I'm going to hold the shift key. So I get something like that. Let's move this maybe to here. Let's size this way down. I'm going to say I want something like, I don't know. Let's go really tiny. Yeah, something like that. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold the shift key 
So I shift key, and I'm going to click on the camera. What that does, it adds to the existing subtool. So that existing subtool is set to a subtractive. So that's going to cut it into the surface. And not only that, the distance, right, is what I had originally. Right? So if we look at just this subtool, this is what I'm actually creating. Right? So then I can say, you know what? I don't like where that's sitting in space. Now that I have it looking at my model, I want this to come like, yeah, right about there. Let's put it there. And then now let's even do this. Let's duplicate it a couple times. Perfect. It's what I've always wanted. Right? And then look, boom, masking, just move those. That's where I want them. Right? So I used the spotlight to create the piece. Right? And now I'm just duplicating that mesh and moving it around. Right? But, but that thickness was set perfectly for me. Right? So if we think about this again, let's turn this back on. Uh, pfft, I don't know. Let's grab this. Okay? And now let's put that in here. Like this. And say I want that right there. If I hold the shift key in camera. Right? And I turn this off. You can see those little notches now are in there. All I did was added it to the existing subtool. Right? So you see the workflow. You can either add the subtools. But I also can create the images. So now. Let's take this and practice again, all right? Let's go back to the walkie-talkie. Walkie, walkie-talkie, walkie niner, vector niner, niner in there. Is there a niner in there? Do I hear a niner? Okay, sorry, I got to do it when I'm talking walkie-talkies. All right, so let's edit this. Let's go ahead and I'm going to reorganize these. Let's see, I grabbed, oh, I've messed this image up, so I'm actually going to reload them. Let's reload this from scratch so I can get all my defaults again. I'm going to take this, okay? This is sitting in the middle, right? This this is sitting in the middle. So I'm going to grab this and say mesh center. So I know that's sitting dead center of the walkie-talkie. What's your vector, Victor? Like it, James. Right? And now I'm going to say, let's go down here, hold the shift key, right? And I want it to go about that big. But what I'm going to do is tile this. So I can hold the shift key and tile uniformly. But what I want is I want, let's see, three this way. And I want four that way. And now maybe I'll size them down. And I know that's sitting where I want it to sit because of the snapping ability. Right? So now I'm going to say, all right, this is going to be where I'm going to make the buttons. So the first thing I want to make, here we go, cake, onion. I need to make the cutting in first, right? I need to cut into the surface. So I'm going to hold the Alt key and click on the camera. That creates a new subtool that's a subtractive. You can see where my cursor is. Because live booleans and on, that's what I get, right? And you can see that's cutting through the surface. But it's only cutting through the one above it. It's not touching either one of these. Right, so if I turn the polyframe mode on, you can see it's going from beginning to the end of this one. Does everyone understand that? Let me just hold that for a second and take a swig of water for what I have left. Okay, and make sure you understand that. Would it be very complicated to make an auto even out of the edge thickness of that profile from the extended Vs? That's what it's going to try and do is create an uneven uh you're going to see right here in a minute to your question. Okay, so what I want to do is, you know what, I don't need this bro all the way through. I'm only just making this for buttons. So that's deep enough, right? I just want a certain depth for my buttons. I'm going to say probably right about there. That's nice. That's good. Right? That's where I would want it to go. Okay? So now I'm like, okay, let's take this and say, okay, let's size this back up. Get these, now I got to reposition these because I moved everything around, right, to where I want them, right? And I can even move the model if I want to, either one, whatever, whatever floats your boat, there. So in essence, I can move a model, right, in position, or move an image, right? So for me, I didn't move the model when I did this, right? I just kept everything as it is, but because I'm talking to you guys and walking through things, I'm moving things around. Now, what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to hold the Alt key and click on this, and that's shrinking those duplicating parts, right? And now I'm just going to click the camera, and that's going to create now a new subtool. That's my buttons with the depth of the previous one, right? And I, I think that's still a little... So maybe I want something more like that, okay? And then now I come down here, and then this is where I did the handy-dandy hold control key and did something like that, right? And then I did, let me position this a little bit more where I want them, right? And then same thing for up here. Hold the control key and did something like that, right? So this is how, looking back at now the finished walkie-talkie, that's how I did these. Right, so you see I made a cut first, and then I did an addition, okay? So, what's fun about this, people, not only can we do that, right, let me load my ship now. Let's load the ship. Okay, so you can see back here, right, all the stuff I was doing here in the back, right? Here, we'll turn off the coloring and the material so you can get a better view here, right? So this part in the back, right? I wanted to be able to create quickly and fast. So if I look at just this piece, right, which makes up, you can see there's different pieces that make up different parts of my ship here, right? So there's one main piece that's pretty much most of the hull, right? There's another piece in here that's just that portion. Are you seeing the stacking of meshes I'm doing here, right? And then I'm using different shapes to cut into them. Right? I got different, like, look at this subtool. Right? Look how many pieces are here. But all it's doing is making cuts. Right? So if you look at this, look at it in this form, and then I undo this, that's making the cuts like there, through there, right? And then up in the front, right? It's making that cut through there. Right? So for example, this piece, right? To make the afterburner to the back, I just used, I just grabbed a cube. And I cut it up, and then I just use some Ziri measure. So I got this nice base, right? So this is something I created. This this wasn't from an alpha. It's just taking a mesh, right? This is literally uh, just because I like you guys. This is me just going, okay, let's make this, and saying, okay, I want it to be a little bit wider, okay? And then I said, all right, let's say and use the trim. And I say I want something like that. Right, and then I used a lot of mirror and welding if I wanted to, something like that. Then I'd say, okay, let's do like this. Then I want it to have maybe a little cut through there. Right, and I'm getting new poly groups in essence is what I'm getting. Right, and then I say I'll cut through that. We'll mirror and weld that. And so this is in essence how I was making the piece. Okay, and you can see the geometry is a mess. Right, it's a disaster. It's a disaster! So all I did is here is say group by normals, right? And starts looking at the normals. I turned on the other algorithm, which is this little circle here. You can see it's open or close. Open will actually look at it differently. And see, it does a better job of trying to assign different polygroups, right? So that's got a different polygroup. That's got a different polygroup now, right? That's got a different, that's got a different. They look, it's not doing a very good job of coloring taking different color IDs to you guys that look the same, but they're not, right? These is the same. So now I can just say, well, let's knock it down. And then there you go. So now I've got multiple different polygroups here. So then all I did was go here, right? Go to Z remesher, right? And then I said by groups, no smoothing, definitely want it symmetrical and then remesh it. And then this is what I start to get. Right? And I start looking at this and seeing what I want. That's all I've started to do. And then I started controlling what polygon count I wanted. Right? So, in essence, that's how I made this. Okay? Now, I made this. Okay? So, this has got a very distinct shape to it. Right? And now I want to start creating that afterburner. Right? If we look at the final piece, right? There's a, there's a lot of cutting happening through here. There's cutting, and then there's expanding, and there's cutting again, expanding, cutting again, expanding, blah, 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 
right? So if you really look at the complications that I have through here, it's all started from that one singular piece, this piece, right? So if you come down here in this folder, that has made 28 subtools, right, are making up what I'm doing to this one piece in essence, okay? So <clears throat> let's take now this concept, let's remake this, okay? So I'm gonna clone this just so we can visually get an understanding of what I did here with this. Because I think this is also a very powerful part of the snapshot ability, okay, within Spotlight. Okay. Yeah, you're looking, there's VODs. We had someone coming in late. No worries. Okay. So, <clears throat> I'm sorry. If I missed any questions, put them again. Because I've been trying to keep an eye on this, all right? So, I've got this mesh that I've created. I now can do... We've been talking about just bringing images in and using images, pure black and pure white, and then creating geometry out of it. You guys are going to be able to do the opposite. So you're going to be able to use anything that exists, and I'm going to say, come to alpha, okay? And I'm going to say, from mesh. And what opens up is a little window. And you can see what it's doing is it's grabbing the document for us. I'm setting my map size. Here's a little known fact for everybody. Don't go any bigger than 512 by 512 if you're going to use a snapshot by 3D. It's really not necessary, okay? Because when we create the geometry, we're not using the necessarily the resolution, okay, for the amount of topology you're going to get. In. So now I'm going to say, all right, let's frame this. And I'm going to zoom out just a bit. And you can see when I zoom out, you can see what I'm getting. Then I say, okay. What that does is creates an alpha, right? So it doesn't matter if it's an alpha, it doesn't matter if it's a texture. And you can see right here, our little button, add to spotlight, would also exist in the texture palette, right? There's an add to spotlight right there. So what we've done is we put that button here. So I select this, add to spotlight, and you can see, bingo, there it is. Now it's floating here and I've got it here. Now. I'm going to start creating shapes for this ship. I'm going to start creating a bunch of ships. So obviously, you want to be able to save out. So to the question, you save here to your spotlight. That'll save out all your images you're looking at into a spotlight file. But I literally just showed you now how to take a piece of geometry and turn it into an alpha and then save that out. Right? So that's a way I could actually take a mesh and turn it into an alpha as well. So there you go. Okay? Now... With this said, now I'm coming in here and I'm going to say, okay, I want this to snap to world center or mesh center? Mesh center. Then I'm going to size it up. I'm going to get it to the size, right, of that. Okay. I'm going to hold the Alt key and say, okay, that's about the thickness I want there. Hold the Alt key. I'm going to camera that, right? That's automatically being used as a cut now, right? You can see that in there. And so now I've got two subtools, live booleans on. So now I'm going to say, okay, perfect. Let's now size that down a little bit more. Something like that. Let's just camera that. Okay, so now this has created another subtool. Right, and now watch this. We're going to Alt, bring this in. Okay, we're going to camera that. So that one's now cutting in. So if you see, I'm like doing an alternating thing. I'm cutting into the surface, adding the surface, cutting into the surface, right? Okay. Now I'm going to undo. And now I'm going to use this frame portion here. Maybe something like that. Okay. I'm going to hold the Alt key and click on that. So let's turn off this and see what we have. Okay. So yay. What do we have here? Wonderful. Just, just lovely, lovely stuff. Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn on my gizmo, my handy dandy gizmo, okay? And I'm going to turn on polyframe so you guys can see what's going on here. I'm going to center my gizmo just because I want to, right? And I'm going to turn on this little icon right here, which that icon is about subtools. Or if you want to go Joseph's analogy, pizza boxes. And then I took, we took it to another level by saying, how many people are you going to have at the party? Are you just having you and another person? Because then you only need one pizza. But if you're having a big party, you're going to need multiple pizzas. So in essence, do I want to move one subtool, two subtools, or 100 subtools? Okay? So what this is now doing is it's looking at everything I have 
and it's going to allow me to use move these as a unit. Okay, what I don't want is the main one to be used, right? So in essence, this subtool here, right? So if we're looking at this, and here we'll go back to the selection, I don't want that subtool to be a part of the movement, right? I just want other subtools, right? So you can see you can move in in sections. So here, let, let's use the demo soldier so you guys can get a better visual cue here. Okay, so let's turn these all on. Let's get rid of let's get rid of that. So now that I have this, right? I can say give me the body and the goggles. And now the body and the goggles, if I turn symmetry off, are gonna move as a unit. Okay, and if I want to add the shirt, I hold down control shift, click on the shirt and the vest, and now those will add. If I want to take it out, hold down control shift and tap, and now that takes out. Right, so this is a way for you to move things as a unit, okay? So, you can also then start going, okay, what about not only using as a unit, but we can start doing things like folders as well. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Folders. So now this one's in a folder, right? And then let's say, let's take this and let's make this another folder as well right and then now I'm going to say I'm adding this I'm adding this I'm adding this right so in essence I've got this piece and this piece so I could say watch this gear transpose set and now only these pieces are moving as a unit right so this one that's sitting in this folder isn't being touched because now I'm using just folder by folder base, right? And you can add that. I'm going to, hold on, let me turn off my quick saves. We don't need, I'm not, I don't need to save anything. I'm good. All right. So I'm moving this, okay, because I'm going to want to start using these in a certain way, right? So then I can say, let's go in here now. Let's delete the folder, right? And I wanted this one to subtract, subtract. Right? And then addition or subtract. Right? So what I'm doing here is I'm creating, if you look, okay, so let's let's turn this off. Let's just look at just this piece. So this is my first subtract, right? So I want this to be a cutting into the surface, right? So I'm going to add them to this folder now, right? And you can see this one subtool was the cut. So this is the first one I did, right? And then this one is adding, right? Because I want to, you know what, have it to be, whoops, I want it to be something more like this. Uh, let's go something, it sticks out a little bit, with something like that, right? And then this one's a subtractive, and I want that, right, to be cutting into the surface through here, right? So how do I want this to go? Where do I want this to be? So I have it way out here. Might help if I do something like that here. We'll do this. So now this is sitting there, right? So watch this. I can use this blue one and adjust where do I really want that to be, right? So whoops. I'm just creating something like that, right? I'm just going along the way, right? So this is how I started doing all this, right? So that creates that. Then I said, I want to create more elements to this, right? I want to cut into the surface. So then I brought back my spotlight here, and then I said, okay, let's create something a little bit more. Let's grab this, right? And I size this up. Then I snapped, right, to mesh center, and then I said, okay, let's let's start moving this, right? So let's snap it, start moving that. Then I'm going to expand it this way, and then let's move it down so it starts cutting the surface like that, and I'm going to make that a subtractive and its own new subtool. Right, because now I just want this to be little little accent parts. 
So I'm just resizing this down because I only need it to be so deep going cutting into the surface. So I want something like that, maybe like that, right? So it's like happy little mistakes there, happy little trees. Now the beauty here is to now the spotlight, right? I can say, okay, I'm done with that. I'm done with that. I'm done with that. Let's grab this. Let's rotate this, holding the shift key, snap it. And now maybe let's cut in a little notch here, hold the shift key, addition. So what's happening now is that's notching in there and it's staying the same width as what this one is. Okay, so this is where it's the benefit to be able to add to an existing subtool. Right, that's all I'm doing here is adding to this existing subtool. And then I can mirror and weld if I need to. So again, coming down here, I can mirror and weld, right? And I can get it on the axis that I want. So looking at the floor, right? This is sitting here in negative space. This is stretching across. So what I need to do first is mirror it along the X, then mirror and weld. Because I'm looking at the back, right? So wherever that red line is, that's the positive side. That's what mirror weld is looking for. Okay? So now I'm just starting to create like a little design element here. That's it, right? I'm just going with whatever I want now. And I know no matter what I click, right? When I'm sitting here in the spot spotlight, right? This edit mode, that's going to have the same depth and it's going to be added to the same subtool if I go that route. So this is exactly what I started to do. Okay, so then what this did for me is going back to creating other alphas, I also wanted the ability to do stuff like that too, continuing this idea, and say, okay, I'm able to snap to the surface and create these mirrorings and have all these meshes be centered with another subtool. What about the image itself, right? So, what I mean is, let's do something like, let's take this image, and now I want to take this, all right, and we're going to center it. So, we know this now, and I'm going to say this. If I hold the Alt key and click on this union, it cuts out, right? So, that's sitting somewhere in space right now, okay? And what I want to do is swap. So, you see this quick selection? And I want to swap and save for the Z-Man. And see, now the Z-Man is sitting there. And now I can scale that down. And now I just only click on that. And what I've done is created an alpha that looks like that, right? So I've got the ability to even swap alphas. Okay, so let's try this again. Let's try it in a different sense. So what I mean, let's grab this now. So now I literally, see, whatever I click on, we swap, right? So now I have this one selected. We'll scale this and say something about there. Let's say I want to scale that up right around there, right? Hold the Alt key, right? And click on the union. That's that. You know what? Now I want, I don't know. Let's take this. It's going to swap it. And now I'm going to say, okay, let's shrink this down a little bit like that. Okay? And then I'm going to say union that. Now watch this. I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm going to say, let's rotate. Okay. I want to start rotating this to maybe do something like that. Okay. And then I'll click on union. Now I'm going to hit the one key union, one key union, one key union, one key union. Right. I'm actually repeating this pattern, right? And then I'll swapping out. You can see again, swapping between them, right? So this is now the selected one, right? So you can see if I turn this off, now I click, and now this is the selected one. And then, of course, to get the other side, you guys already know, right? You just do stuff like this as well. Okay, so this is swapping out the images, Okay, so what I just did there, let's let's look at this again, all right? Because the swapping part becomes really important for this, all right? So let's let's move some of these images out of the out of the way here, and let's move this mesh just out of the way. Let's just 
let's just look at only, let's say, this. Okay? Let's look at this piece. So this is just a circular piece, right? So now, I'm going to say, you know what, let's duplicate that piece. Okay? And what you guys got to be thinking of right now is, you're creating, look up here, look at me! You're creating a new alpha. That's what you're doing here. Right? So I need to first have, what is the alpha that I want to edit? I love that I'm tapping on my Cintiq like you guys can actually see my hands. Right? So I have this circular shape, right? I duplicated it because what I want to do now is I want to use the circle piece on itself in essence, right? So I made a duplicate. I want this to snap. I'm going to size that down. Okay? And I'm going to say, let's use that as a cut in. So Alt key, boom, it's cutting in. All right? <coughs> Now I'm going to say, all right, let's move this to the top up here. All right, so I want to make sure I'm snapping. And I'm going to size down. Maybe something like that. Okay, so I've got this, right? I'm just snapping along here. Okay, so this is why I wanted to create a duplicate. Because I'm re, I'm in essence, I'm making a new alpha here, right? So I've just already changed that circular shape. And now I've put a hole in it. Okay, this is not going to work. Well, this, your question blands about working with array mesh, that's a yes and no. There's no array mesh in Spotlight, but I use these to create pieces that I didn't use in array mesh, which I did a ton on my walkie talkie, and I will show you. All right, so <clears throat> now I have this. I want to now keep building an image, so I'm going to hold the Alt key and click on the union, right? And now what I want to do is rotate. But this is just a circle, people. So if I did this, it just rotates like this on itself. I'm going to now, remember the beginning? I'm going to move this. And I can snap to another image center. <gasps> and then I can say, Shh, rotate and hold the shift key. I'm going to say, let's go there. Right? And now I'm going to say, alt key, union. Now watch this. The number one, alt key, union. The number one, alt key union. The number one, alt key union. Number one, alt key. If this is not a Lisa Needs Braces moment, I don't know what is. Alt key. Number one, does the repeat. Alt key. Right? Number one, alt key union. Number one, Lisa Needs Braces. Right? So what I've done here is started creating some kind of crazy little gear. Right? So... I'm just repeating an alpha, an action that I did to the alpha. That's what the one key is. In essence, that's repeating replay last. So it's replaying the last action I need. All right? Lisa needs braces more than anything. So now, because I now have that ability and because I have other things I maybe want to start doing, uh, I don't know. Let's grab something else here. Here, let's grab this. Let's, let's tile it back down to normal. And let's snap this to the middle. And then I'm going to do like that. And I'm going to say, just click adding it. So now it's added to that alpha. Okay. Then I'm going to say, let's snapshot it there. Let's do that. And let's alt click into it. Let's turn on quick select. Let's grab the circle. And let's size that down. Say something like that. Click on the union. Right? And now I, you can see the workflow that I'm creating here. I don't know what this is. Don't try to figure me out, people. Dental plan! So see now, anytime I click on any images, you see it's swapping out. Wherever the dial is, that's where it swaps out. Okay? And then, of course, why I'm creating this, everybody, right? Now I can create this by just clicking on the camera, right? And then now I've created that piece of geometry. Look. Right? And then this is what I get. Okay? Now, continuing this thought. All right? <clears throat> there are many times now that I'm using this. Okay? I might want to take now, say, something like this. Let's size that up. All right? And I'm going to take the circle. We know we have snapping ability. Right? I'm going to size that down. And I'm going to say, let's do 
a union negative, right? And then a union positive. Okay, so let's do now a replace. And what I want to do is put the logo, right? So now I swap, there's my logo, right? So now I can size this down and use that as a negative. Okay, so you guys are getting, I hope you're getting this workflow that I'm doing. There are going to be times though where you might want to, in essence, combine an alphas, making one alpha two or making three alphas one, stuff like that, okay? So the swapping ability is going to allow me to do a lot because I might want to start cutting into this. Let's say I want to cut in up here, right, with something, I don't know, this, right? But I also want, I don't know, this to be with it when I do the, when I'm going to do the cutting. Okay. So I can obviously cut these in, right? So I can size this up, but just maybe something like that. Okay. If I hold the shift key and click on the image, we move the image over to there. Right. So let me do this again. Okay, so I currently have this image selected. So from what you guys know, if I just click on another image, we're just swapping the images, right? And it's taking on the scaling and the direction, right? When you're and you're rotating, you're snapping to degrees. So when I'm when I'm doing this, when I'm rotating, I'm clicking, I'm snapping to degrees. You see, that's why it has notches. Right, so that's 45 right there. There's 90, right? There's 45 right there, and then there's 90. So this is snapping to degrees by five, five degree increments. Okay, so I've got this feature. So I'm gonna say, you know what, I wanna cut this, and then now I also maybe wanna, you know what, I would actually like to add this, right, and start cutting with that piece first. Right, so you can see I can swap between the images. So what it did, here if we turn off this, is it cut into both. See that? So it made that cut and it also made that cut. Right, because the images were stacked. Right, so if I turn this off, see, so I got that cut now. The images were stacked on themselves. So I allowed to start placing them in a nice stackability which I know then they're all lined up and good to go, right? So that became very useful for me because again, I'm trying to create stuff that's gonna go on this ship, right? That's all I'm trying to do is create pieces, right? So if again, we go back to this, not the walkie talkie, we go back to this, right? If you look at this, this piece right here, right? <clears throat> Really, what this is, is this. That's all it is. Look, it's super low polygon. It's just using, all I did is use Z Modeler, right? Gave me this, so if we clone this, right? This is it. And then I said, okay, let me start designing. And I started thinking about what did I want to have on this design? Well, I'd want to have a nice, maybe something going on there. Maybe something going through here. Right? So I just start, okay, let's go from the top and saying, what do I want? Okay, let's reload because I have messed these up a lot. Let's reload from the beginning. Okay, and I said, okay, I want this piece. Right? Make sure I'm snapped in the center. Snap. Right? And then I said, okay, let's extend that this way. Held the Alt key. Right? And then I said, camera. Right? I want this piece in here to generate and be made, right? Now this is the new selected subtool, right? And so you can see what I'm getting. Oh, I made two of them, sorry, I hit the button multiple times, so let me delete. I got click happy. Come on, my pen is acting up, sorry. My pen is not being seen, there we go. Let me get this one off. Come on, Ooh, little welcome problems here, little welcome problems. Okay, so again, this is my piece, right? 
Turning on my spotlight. I want this. Come on. I, I, something's going on with my pen. All right, coming on here. I'm snapping. Say something like that. Holding the Alt key, camera, right? So that's now creating that cut. Then I say, okay, I want to have now a different cut. I want to have more of a, a little bit more, something maybe more like this. So we'll snap to here. I'm going to, mm, let's extend this way. All right, and maybe extend downward and maybe tile it like that. Okay, and then watch this. This right now, I'm just going to say hold the Alt key. I'm sorry, Shift key and click this. And all that's doing is adding to the existing. Right, so I get the same heights, the same everything right through here. Right, and then maybe I come to the front now, or maybe I figure out something else I want to do. You know, here, let's make some uh, some notches through here. Right, so let's put this back on. And let's grab this guy instead. Right, we scale that up, maybe. Maybe do something like this. Let's rotate, hold the shift key, we'll snap it. Right, and then maybe I'm going to do that. I'm going to hold the Alt key, camera, so it makes a new subtool, right? So what we have now is this, and I don't want that going all the way through, so I'm going to adjust this and do something like that, right? Now, what I've done is I developed a workflow, okay, here for myself. So what I can do now is say, all right, this has got a particular depth. There is nothing now stopping me from grabbing anything else and say, I can grab this now. And let's say, let's snap this here, right? We'll size that up and then hold the shift key and click on camera. And now I have that, right? Or grab now maybe the diamond, snap in that, hold the shift key, camera. Right, so see, I'm creating a really quick workflow here where I know those are all sitting at the exact same depth because the subtool I have selected is this subtool that I've also already tagged as a subtractive. So it's not only that I'm attractive, <laughs> not really. Let's be honest, people. Let's be honest. So this is then just adding to the already existing, right? So hold on, I'm just catching up with, with some questions here. Uh, now I want to play this reverse to check if Paul really says something when he rewinds. Oh, nice. Nice. You never know. I could be saying something. Uh, and a bit, sorry, I happened in late. You might have explained this already. But say you're working on a character. Is there a way to control the depth of which the alpha cuts into the model instead of going straight through? Yep, I'm explaining that right now. Their depth is, again, being controlled by the depth of the subtool that you have selected. So this subtool that is selected has a certain depth. So no matter what I do, right, even if I was to make something new, even if I was to grab this, okay, and then just hit the camera key, it'll make a new subtool. But the depth of that subtool, right, is the same depth as this. Right, that's what it's looking at. It's looking at this and it's making the same depths is what it's trying to do. That's what's controlling the depth, okay? Now, one other thing that I wanna to touch base on with you guys, you can see there's a little bit of some softening happening. You see there's some roundness. Okay, so let's just take this piece and move it up here. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so this image, right, is what I use to create that, right? So let's clean everything up. Let's do a selected. Let's grab just this. Let's hide the rest. I don't need everything else. No, I said hide them, Paul. Paul, I said hide them. Okay. So you can see this piece, right? You can see how it's kind of more sharp there than what I'm getting through there. And see, so you're getting roundness, roundness, nice. So there's controllers for this for you guys. Okay. So when I click and hit this camera, it's creating the mesh, 
but it's got some smoothness that's happening to it. So you guys can control this in our settings. So in the preferences, you have a spotlight controls. Okay, and you can see there's a snapshot smoothness, there's a snapshot retain corners, there's a snapshot detect corners. Okay, so if I turn all this all the way up to retain corners and then camera it, you can see it's already starting to get a little bit better, right? Then if I say, you know what, don't put as much smoothness, here, let's knock this down a quarter, let's knock this down to 10 and camera it. You can see you start getting more and more closer and closer to this image, right? So there is controls here for you. So I can even say snap detect corners, and you can see that slider actually now gets turned off. And I can say let's put this really low even, and now camera it. And you can see you pretty much now get the image, right? So you have the ability to mess around and control with this, okay? And you can see the differences. It's not it's not huge. It's very subtle. But there are times that you want to control this. And then what's controlling our resolution in essence of the mesh. So you can see this is 114,000 polygons, 116, 116, 116. See they're all about the same. This one's only 21,000. So why was this 21,000 and these in the hundreds? I don't know. You guys are supposed to tell me this. I have no idea. Somebody tell me. Of course, I know. Come on. I'm just being really bad jokey right now. Okay. So what's controlling that is the image, but not necessarily just the resolution per se. It's how large the image is. Okay. So smaller image creates less resolution. Larger image creates more resolution. Okay, so if you look, this is 128,000 polygons, right? And the one before is only 12,000 polygons. So if you guys notice, when we were talking about me doing this ship part, right? Nope, not that one. This one, right? When we were talking about this, notice that I kind of, when we were talking, right? I kind of zoomed in closer to here, right? That way, because I was dealing with the larger image, which then I knew, I knew I was going to get a little bit more resolution there. Okay? And 512 by 512 is the optimal. Uh, listen, you can go 1K and 2K, but guys, that's not going to improve your your resolution. Okay? If you go above 512 by 512, you're not really improving your resolution as far as the mesh that's created. What you're improving is the resolution of your image, right? Because, of course, if you got images that are 512 by 512, when you start, you know, sizing them up and stuff like that, you can start seeing, right, the pixelation. But ZBrush isn't looking at that. It's only looking at pure white, right? That's all it's looking for is pure white, okay? So it, you could definitely go larger, but you're just making your, your spotlight file bigger in megabytes, right? So there's no need to do that. I would keep it 512 by 512. Okay, so that should take care of the resolution question, right, and go there, right? So what I mean by file size, right, when you guys, if you guys are going to embrace this feature, which I'm hoping after today you do, because I love this feature and that's how I, I create really fast. It's about working really fast, creating your own alphas very fast, whether it be from mesh, right? <laughs> You're going to want to save this stuff out. So you're going to texture and you save spotlight. So I obviously had one for this ship that I called like sci-fi glider ship. And that was my spotlight files for this ship. Now, with this said, there is something else we can do, people. So <clears throat> I'm going to size this up, okay? And I'm going to just move this over here. And I'm going to switch to the paintbrush. Okay? And now watch this. I can even paint with white. And if I swap, I can paint with black. Right? So why do I care? People, this allows you now to make anything that your hand can even do, right? So I'm just 
in racing everything that's in this alpha in essence, right? So if I hit the V key to switch between white and black, because that's the selected colors. See, I'm switching, right? This image, right, it's got nothing now. So you see, I can draw whatever I want, right? So I'm going to say, let's switch to a standard brush, okay, because that's what we need. And then I'm going to say, uh, I can go with a smaller draw size, and I'm going to start drawing now. Right, and then I can cut a hole and by just all I need to do is hold the alt key. Right, and I can go smaller and I can even, hi. Right, I can write whatever I want. Hold the alt key. Okay, guys, I can even do this. I can er erase and add, right, fill different colors. Right now I'm adding all white. Now everything's all white. Now everything's gone, right? So what I'm doing here is I'm going to show this feature in a minute, what I'm doing. But now you got to start thinking about this. I'm going to say, all right, let's get a harsh alpha, right? So then I have something like this, okay? And then I'm going to click here. Whoops, click on the alpha. might help if I clicked on the alpha. All right, and I'm going to switch to the paintbrush. This is why I'm moving this over here because I want to click here and start drawing. And now I can draw a straight line like that. Then I say I want maybe something like that. Mm, now let's go a little bit smaller. And let's do something like that. Right? And then, oh, okay. So what if we turn on, right? I want maybe some lazy mouse as well to help with this. But this is allowing me to create straight lines, right? Not only that, I can come in here and say, okay, let's rotate 45, something like that, okay? And then now I'm gonna make a line that goes like this, another one, whoops, I moved my hand, like this, like this, right? And really what this has done, whoops, is created this on an angle. Right, so what I'm doing here is I'm just painting freely, but when I hold the shift key, it snaps to either vertical or horizontal, right? So I can write things out, whatever I wanna do. I can make a smiley face, right? And guys, think about this is geometry. So you can use this to cut into the surface, right? So the minute I hit this camera, I create the geometry. So see, I'm sitting on this one subtool, so that's where it was created, right? Right here. So then there you go. There's the geo. And see how kind of rough it's getting right there? That's what this slider is controlling, this smoothness. This is why by default we have it set to 40. Right? It, could just, it just created a better result, right? So if I grab this same image, whoops, turn, off the, turn this off so I can select it, and then just camera it. Right, so you're getting a little bit better, re cleaner result now. Right, but what I'm trying to emphasize here, everybody, again, is seriously, there's nothing. There's no limitation here for you. You can draw your own alpha. You can grab images. You can create alphas in another application and bring them in. It's your world, man. So this is how you can go, right? You can do whatever you want. How many light bulbs have gone off what we will need sunglasses? Ah, so many light bulbs, James says. I like it. Bigger file for no reason. No, don't need it. We need to scale up our for working mesh. Okay, answered that question. I'm just looking at questions. So keep the questions coming through because we're almost done here, guys. I got to head off to another meeting. So I can't, I'd stream all day if I could. Right? So what questions do we have now about this spotlight feature, right? Especially in the sense that we've been looking at it, creating to Paul. You're like, guys, seriously, grab a triangle and now just think of the things you can create. I can now, boom, it's a rocket ship. Yay, right? Then I can say, let's move it down here. And boom, now it's even multi-tiered rocket ship. Then I can say, all right, well, let's expand it this way. Now it's more like a building. You get what I'm saying here? And now let's just frame that. 
So now it's framed. Right? Shift key will scale out. Alt key will scale in. Right? And then you can frame a frame. So now this is double framed. Right? Because I've already framed and now it's double framing it again. Right? You guys got to really... Seriously, when we were making this, I was really trying to think of, oh man, what can I get? Like you could do something as simple as this and just extend, right? And then now move it down here and now extend again, right? And then move here and then just keep extending and now extend across, flipping it, flipping, and then extend this way. No, I'd rather, I'd rather move this up here. And then I'm going to extend that way. And that's the shape I'm looking for, actually. Right? And if you don't want this anymore, right, I can grab another image. I can say, okay, let me grab this image. And I'm use this to just cut that out. And now it's cut out. Oh, you know what? I didn't make it long enough. Extend this. I want to cut like that. There, now it's cut. Now I grab this, right? And then now I'm just, I want a mirror and weld in essence, on the image, right? So I'm just uniting it over. Does this make sense to everybody? Is everyone feeling good now? Are you guys all feeling like, so here's my challenge for you, okay? F before the next stream, I ch a challenge, okay? By the way, is your, the topics for this, these streams are all ran by you, the, the, you, the audience, okay? So here is, our next possible topics. Sorry, the overlay didn't get to work before I get into the stream. So click on that link. Those are some four topics that we're gonna be looking at for the next stream. So here's my challenge. Before my next stream, create something with this, put it up on ZBrush Central and tag me in it, okay? So that I know that you guys have done it because you can tag people and search for people in the new ZBrush Central, okay? And let's see what you guys can now do. Now that you guys had me for two hours talking about this feature, and then of course you have the recording after this to watch again and again and again, right? Let's see what you can do now. Challenge yourselves, people. Guys, when, we're, when I'm developing, it's not like we have even what you guys have. We have the bare bones features, right? And then we're trying to figure out things and going, huh, Huh. So, if, for example, if you look at this part of the walkie-talkie right here, you got to go, you got to know, okay, what are the steps maybe I can make this happen the fastest, okay? And here's where my mind went, okay? Here's exactly. So, I wanted this, right? So, I said, okay, I need to create this kind of shape, right? And then I want to add a bevel. All right, so this is going to be really easy for me to do in the new spotlight feature, okay? So, let me grab... That's not the old walkie. This is the old walkie, okay? So this is the piece. So let's turn these off so we're just focused right on this, okay? So I said, all right, well, let's grab this circle, right? So let's, let's hide everything else. Okay, now I got this. Then I said, all right, <laughs> let's size this up. Let's go ahead and duplicate this now. And then I'd say, okay, I want this now to stretch across like this, something like that, right? And then I said, okay, snap, right? And then now I'm, boom, snapping to the other image, right? And then I can keep moving along that same axis, right? But here's the thing. If you guys, you see this image, how long it is? See the one that's orange? See how long it is? Everyone see that? See, it's very long, okay? The thing you're going to have to understand that I didn't even actually talk about is when you're doing this, right, what image you're trying to copy onto is important. So you can see this one is squared. So if I come in here and I start doing this, and go, oh, yeah, I'm going to line this up. This is going to be awesome, right? And then you come in here and you hit this little union, Right? It can only copy based upon the size of the underlining image. Okay, so what that means is this is really the image I want to add to. So I'd probably say let's 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 shrink this down a little bit. Right through here. Well, let's not 
do that. Okay. <clears throat> then let's copy, let's take this image now. All right, I'm going to restore it back to its glory. Okay, and now this is my main image now, right? And so now I'm taking this image and saying, let's, let's snap to this, right? This image here, and let's move it here. Let's scale that up, and then now union. And you can see now this is what I want, right? Because I need this to have the same length, right? So what I mean by that is if we guys, if we grab this, right? So the, here's another example. I do this and then let's say, let's grab, let's grab this image, okay? <clears throat> and then let's go ahead and put this here. Let's do this, let's scale that up. Okay, so you see this part right here and right here. Because it's being, it does, it's being passed, the underlining image, this will not end up in this image, right? So when I click this little union, right? See, it gets cut. This image needs to be completely in the border of the underlining image, right? So it's gotta be sitting more like this, right? And then when I click on this little union, right? See there, it's being added. You can see the whole thing's there. So you got to make sure you're first making a large enough image. So this is pretty much how I did this, right? And then I said, okay, I want this. And you know what? I would like to actually maybe even, mm, you know what? I don't like what I did here. So I'm going to undo back to where I was. I don't like this. I don't like this. Okay, so let's undo, 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 undo. Beautiful about undo. Let's go all the way back to the duplicate. Right? I'm going to start with actually this being smaller and then doing this. Right? So I'm a lot longer. Scale that up now. Okay, now I'm going to hold the Alt key and shrink this down quite a bit. Something like that. Right? And now I'm going to grab this and now this is what's going to go here and now I'm going to shrink this down. So I'm going to snap it. Click start drag and holding the shift key. I know that's aligned. Now union it. And now what I have is this. Right? So now I have this image. Okay? So if you look this is too long, right? This is where now this comes into play. See, I can shrink it down to make it fit. And it's all about where this is sitting, okay? So if I put this here and then I say, okay, I want to shrink based upon there, right? You see the circle, this will just dis disappear, right? So I'm going to say middle's fine. And then let me just shrink that down some. Let me go ahead and shrink it down some more, right? And then I'm probably going to size it down actually. And then now I'll shrink it back up. And now I say, okay, this is going to be a sub. Hold the alt key, click on it, right? There's my piece. Then I say, all right, it is too deep right now. So I'm just going to make it not as deep. So I have something like that. Okay, and then I threw on a bevel. So I came to this hidden feature holding the control key. Threw it on a bevel in here, right? So this is to give you guys here a look, right? I want to bevel this through here, right? So I want a beveling to have start happening. Okay, this is now something that I can look at and go, you know what? Okay, I don't know how many I even want down here, coming down, right? So then this is where I use a ray mesh, right? And then I say, okay, I want to have them moving this way, right? And then how many do I want to repeat? 
right? And then I can move them like that. Then I say, okay, it's too big. Let's scale it down, maybe something like that. Right? And you can see, we can do so much now with this. It's, it's at our disposal. Right? I can change the repeats. Right? So this is how I start using things like array mesh for me, which is really, really beneficial. Right? And then I can just, if I make these deeper. Right? And then now I can maybe move it to there. And is that what you want? Is that what I'm looking for? Am I looking for something like that? Or watch this, I can even say extend, extender here, right? And I can extend this way. So I can actually even extend the topology itself. So it's got the same thing built in a deformer. Right? So there you go. That's how I started doing that walkie-talkie. Why is it leaving an outline of the added image? It's just uh, it's just so you can visually see. So when I was doing the copying, it's not there. It's just visually, by default, we are rendering the image behind the other one a little bit differently. So for here, for example, here, so you guys can see what that is, what that question is. They were asking, hey, why is there a little line being there? Okay. It's important because when you guys start, say, grabbing another image, you start pulling over. So you can't see. You can't see it. It's it's a little bit off. But that's why we have this. We have a background opacity. Right? So you see this one's changing a little bit. You can see it back there. So watch. If I move this to be in the front, there it is, right? So there's a background. Op there's opacity changing here, right? But there's also a background opacity. See? So depending on what I had that at is also what's why it was creating when I was going in here and clicking this union, right? It's creating that little thing because the, there's different opacities in the images. But when I go to click on this and turn it into an actual piece of geometry, you're not going to have that. That's all. It's just so you could visually be able to tell the difference because you're dealing with pure white on pure white, right? There's no way you'll be able to see it. So there's different background intensities that you can set per image. No, uh, so the comics legend, so when I was doing the rocket, I'm assuming you're asking, for example, when you had the rocket ship alpha shape, that that can that shape be extruded as a cylinder to make it be a rocket shape in 3D space or will you just be a squared off extrusion? So it will be a squared off extrusion, right? Because this can only go forward. It doesn't have the ability to do around it, but I could do that. I, in essence, I could use another feature to help me get to that point if I wanted to. That w would be possible. I could use a ray mesh, first thing that comes to my mind, to do that, right? So do I even have that rocket ship anymore? No, right? No. I did away with it. It was a triangle. So what I mean by that, here's, let's reload these. I took the triangle, right? And I sized that up. Then I started doing a extend this way. And then I said, all right, let's move this down here. Let's extend this way. Right, so then I have this. So then when you create this, right, this is just creating a new sub tool. So we'll just look at just this one, right? It looks like this. So here, I'll, I'm going to put it at the center of the world. So, okay, so now it's at the center of the world. And you can see all that's all it is. Okay, you could, if you wanted to, start playing with things like this and saying, okay, let's rotate along the Y, along the y 360 degrees, right? And then let's just repeat them. And then there you go. So now that's got the rounded portion of it. So this would be the first thing that comes to my mind. And then I would make a mesh, and then I would turn this into a DynaMesh.
so then everything, because nothing's welded together right now. Does that make sense? Something like that could be a way you could go about that using the flatting ability and going from there. Let me see if I missed any other questions that came through. So we guys, we've been at two and a half hours. Unfortunately, I do have to go. But if anyone's got another question right now why I'm still here, throw it at me. Now. Now's the time. Time. Oh, that's cool. Is on my side. Yes, it is. Time. I got live booleans on and everything still. So, I don't know when my next stream will be, but again, let's again look at this poll again so that I put in the chat. Let me find it again. So, if you guys want to quickly just go to this poll, seeing it's a web page, right? You can go to that poll and then we can. I'll see the results. And that'll help me determine what's going to be our topic for the next stream. But again, now I'm challenging you people to try this spotlight feature. Right? Really give it a shot. Uh, no, they cannot be you. Well, <laughs> so Blands is asking, could these shapes be used to make a custom VDM brushes? That's a loaded question. <laughs> um the reason why I'm saying it's a loaded question because you can only create VD br VDM brushes from a flat plane. It has to be a plane and the geometry has to be equally distributed like this, right? It has to be created from this. But there's nothing stopping me from taking like a plane, right, that we have here, right, and then start doing like things like appending shapes because this is how I did some of my VDMs and projecting those in. Like, there's nothing stopping me. Like, I would divide stuff like this up, right? And then I would start using things like the Z-Project brush. And then I would start projecting this into the shape, right? Because ZBrush C is looking at this. Whatever this subtool is, it'll start projecting it into it, right? So you can go, or you can hold the Alt key, right? And it'll just start projecting out into that, right? So this would work as a VDM now. So in technic so that's why I'm saying it's a loaded question. You can't go to Spotlight 3D, make it, and now turn it into a VDM. A VDM can only be created from a flat plane like this that has perfectly equally distributed polygons. It can't be remeshed. It can't be dynameshed. It can't be sc Sculptor's pro on it. It must be perfect quadded mesh like this. So I always use the plane that comes with ZBrush. The plane 3D. I always use this because it's already equally distributed. I know it. Okay, and ZBrush, ZBrush Summit, someone's already put, is coming up the end of this month. So the sculpt off begins the 26th, actually. You're going to want to watch 24 artists go head to head. There is no organic and hard surface side this year. It's everyone from the south. There's only going to be one winner, one belt, one champion. So you're going to want to check that out. That's streaming live. You can only watch that online. We don't allow people to be here for that because the artists need to concentrate. But the other three days, the 27th, 28th, and 29th, that is all open. So again, you'd want to go to the Summit page. Okay, so it's just summit.pixelogic.com. If you're going to be here in person, there's a lot more going on. We've got an on-site challenge as well for anybody You've got all your presentations. We've got workshops. We've got award ceremony. We've got portfolio reviews. There's a lot going on for those that are physically going to be here. If you're going to be in LA area and during this time, I would tell you, come come in person. It's just so much better. You, you just take way more away from the, the event itself. And you're mingling with, with our kind, right? Artistic, creative, sculptor people. So... The poll is, if the poll works out to be even, I decide then what that topic's going to be. So again, people, one last time, here's your poll, right? So let's see what the topic, where, where are we at? Let's even take a look here. So again, you just come here and click. So ooh, we got 36, 36%. No, no NPR, huh? Hmm. 
Interesting. Okay, so jump on here right now. Take that poll. Okay, this is obviously a web page, so even when the stream ends, you can still go jump on this poll really quick. Right, so there's your URL. Make your votes, okay, and get on there. And there it is again, right? Let's see what our next topic will be. All right, I got to head out, honestly. I appreciate everybody here coming in, watching me be crazy Paul again. Crazy Paul. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you taking the time, spending with me. It's been a lot of fun again. It's been, I think, over a year since I've streamed on the channel. So I am making a commitment to come back on a regular basis monthly to you all. So, of course, you're going to see me again at the end of the month here at the ZBrush Summit. But I will be back again in October and so forth and so on. So we're going to do a monthly challenge with you. Anybody that watches now my stream, whatever we discuss, I'm now going to challenge you. And I want you to put the stuff up on ZBrush Central and be tagging it, right? So, I, by the way, speaking of that, I, there's... There's there's two of me, actually. So let's go to ZBrush Central here really quick. So by the way, you can search for users and everything in here. Okay, so... Did I just lose it? Okay, so when you're doing... You can search for the users right here. Right? So you can... I am... Gabo1991 is like my original back in the day. Like, I, don't know, I think I made that 15 years ago. Okay, so that's my personal ZBrush Central. And then there's a Pixo Paul. So that's my Pixelogic one, which is right here. So you guys can, you guys can tag me in things, right? <laughs> now. Right? And there's a tagging system and you can call out, you can hack into an at, in essence, you just do at, just like you do your social media, at Pixel Paul. So it would be awesome for you guys as a challenge from here on out. Whatever I give you, let's try and make some stuff, throw it on Zebra Central and throw the at. So either use Pixel Paul or use the Gabo1991 and I, I will see both. Right? So when you're making that post, just like in normal social media. Okay, so thank you again, everyone. I'll be back soon. Have a delicious, delicious day. Enjoy your week. I'm out. Enjoy the bad jokes. <laughs>